Educating, informing, serving. Fact TV, keeping government honest. December 13th, 1922. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, I'd like to call the order. Um, and we need to approve the minutes of Tuesday, November 22nd, 2022. All second. All right, is there a discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, um, additions to the agenda for routine administrative matters and your pressing matters that will require ratification at a future meeting. The only one I would add is the financials. The only reason I did right. that is so we can get back to the first meeting of the month, especially with number five on the agenda. Sure. Um, and that way they'll continue that way. So yep. moving forward. So that would be financials as what, number six, I guess? Yep. All right. Anything else, Scott? Uh, no, nothing. Okay. Nope. Uh, public comment on items? There people here from the yes. who want to speak. Okay. Okay, Betsy. Uh, so Betsy Thurston, Bellas Falls downtown. Just wanted to say thanks for everyone that um, A came to watch and B participated in the parade of lights. It's quite successful. And you have a winner. Um, come over here so the camera can oh, see. Wow. So you're gonna get the Bragg and Rights uh cheer miser first banner and Drum roll. It's a town of Rockingham Highway Project <laughs> by a landslide. So well done. <laughs> that sounds great. Thank and this you. This is Alicia Thomas. So she's on the committee. Oh, and Beth, thank you, Ben Majeur and uh, Jesse Joshua. Someone made that. That looks nice. Bethany Corson. So thank you, Bethany. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. <laughs> We can wear that proudly next year on their program. Anyone else? Yes, sir. This is my first time here. Okay. Um, so, yes, and please say your name for the um, recording secretary. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Michael. I'm a, a new resident. I just bought a house this summer uh, here in Bellows Falls. Um, I had come down uh, because uh, I've been told by my neighbor that uh, there was a plan to close um, the end of Front Street in front of my house. And uh, I don't know what's going on with that, but I just wanted to get more information and uh, hoping that that's not what the town is going to do. Uh, we just got there and we didn't want to have the road cut off from underneath us literally. So um, I hope that. Uh, I hope that uh, if there's going to be any discussion of changing the, the road, um, that they'll at least let the local residents know about it first. So, thank right. you. That our town, our town, this is the village right. meeting, but oh. it's court. It's fine to be here. Yeah. Um, but the town will be handling the highway, so you get more information probably talking to the spot. Sure. So we've looked at the, as you can tell, the um, some of the reinforcing that holds that hillside in is failing. And so you have to have some engineers take a look and decide what it's going to cost to reinforce or keep that open. So we started that investigation. I don't have a cost yet on what that's going to be or what the long-term solution is for that. So we just started that process. But if you look at the, if you look at, you know, walking up the one side of, uh, side of Front Street, it's, it's severely under stress and failing. So There'll be some discussion. We'll certainly have lots of discussion with the neighbors about what the options are. But given that location and trying to reinforce that is not going to be an inexpensive endeavor. It's going to be fairly expensive to keep that in that street. Okay. You look near the uh, hill park. The park that goes down. Yeah, I was going to say I'm on the last house on the right. Uh, we we just bought the house this past uh, June from uh, a couple that lived there. So. Uh, we, um, right now, we you know we don't mind having the hill open because it makes it a lot easier for us to get out and right. get on our way and work and whatnot. But I don't. Uh, I, if we had to go the long way around, it would just be cumbersome, especially if they end up turning the road into two um, two way rather than one way. I, I, I'm not sure how that would work, but. Um, 
um, that's what the avenue, that's what my understanding was. I wanted to get more information. So oh, that's great. Uh, thank you very much. Welcome. Yeah, yes. we'll the, Welcome to the neighborhood. Thank you. <laughs> is it both sides? Oh. Is it the upper side or the lower side? The lower. Both. More on the lower side, for sure. More on the lower yeah. side. Okay. If you ever take a walk, side. you'll notice it's it's extremely, yeah. um, there's lots of places where it's failing. I don't know if the economical fix would be the, the pile drivers like you use for. Uh, oh, yeah. Possible. To, you know. It's possible to just to reinforce it and put something behind it, but it's very close if you guys notice. Yeah. That house at the bottom of the hill. Mm -hmm. I think there's maybe three feet. Yeah. To get to the corner of the house. So oh, it's okay. up to engineer something now. But we'll work on it and we'll certainly keep the neighborhood informed for sure. Right. This yeah. will not happen without lots of input. And then I'm assuming at least not this spring anyway. It, yeah. With weather coming in all that. Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Um, then, man, then we move on to manager report. So again, great event. We really do appreciate everybody that comes out for the uh, Festival of Lights. I don't know if people did notice, but we have replaced quite a few of the streetlights that were failing. And so um, big thank you to the highway department. They engineered a sort of jerry rig fix so that we can convert the existing ballast to LEDs and not have to replace the entire ballast. So. Mm -hmm. Saving about twenty five hundred dollars per fixture, which is a huge, wow. That's a deal. huge deal. And um, so I think we got about sixteen of them swapped out before the parade. Wow. So if you notice when you drive down through the square, you should hopefully notice that most of those are pretty much back to full capacity. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few more to go, but it certainly does make a difference and, and keeps the downtown safe and hopefully inviting people to come down for events like that. So that was one item. Uh, the second item, it sort of grew out of our joint board discussions, and we'll be talking about this as it comes up in the future. You remember we talked about the fire feasibility study and whether the three communities were going to continue going forward and what it would entail. We did have a, a follow-up call with the USDA um, under this, this uh, rural business development grant process. The project would be eligible. So we talked to the people today that run that program. Um, the applications are due by the end of February. The awards are in the summer and the money has to be spent within the year of the award. So it's not like this is gonna linger. So we'll have this back in front of the fire equipment committee probably sometime in December or early January and then back in front of the joint boards for conversation at the end of January if we're going to then carry this forward for an application which is actually due the 28th of February in 2023. So I know individually some board members have expressed concerns and considerations that they'd like to make sure are addressed as we go forward with this. So just wanted to give this board at least that update and do the same thing. I'll do the same thing with the town next week. And then the fire equipment committee will have to have a, a follow-up as we go forward. Will we get an opportunity to see um, what is being said to the to the USDA on that just so that we can yes, see the application. Our, well, the application itself, we're actually going to have it in at the joint board meeting on the 30th. If we're, if we're going to submit it for consideration by the February oh, 30th. Yes. Okay. Or 31st. 30, I, yeah, 30th or 31st. Okay. And then that would go forward then for submission for the end of February. If that's what the boards choose to do. Thanks. Yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, I spoke to uh, Scott. Uh, last week, the uh, my concern uh, is that uh, I think our board actually voted at one point to support this application, and I, I for one, have second thoughts, uh, uh, particularly given uh, some of the. Uh, What's, what's the expectations? I think that the, uh, I think the, the original impetus for this, uh, my impression, I could be wrong, was uh, coming from Saxon River, uh, I think the uh, concern there was they wanted a new fire station. And, and uh, you know, my feeling is that if we're gonna petition this as a town, um, you don't go in with, with that, Kind of a, a, a position. 
you, you go in with the idea of what does the town need as opposed to uh, what one one village in the town wants. And I, I so I, I think that the I hope I, I hope we can see this again uh, because I think uh, uh, as another item that I mentioned at the last meeting is this the idea that that a part of Rockingham is providing uh, service to another town is needs to be part of this because either I mean the uh, no matter how efficient uh, the fire department we have three is in terms of the the cost of operating the thing the fact is that the taxpayers of Rockingham are buying the equipment mm -hmm. and uh, certainly if, if we're supplying service to another town then that town needs to be in, in for, the, for the the ride on the uh, the equipment so I think there's I think there's a lot of issues that uh, ought to be debated within the town before we ask a third party to come in and tell us what uh, what we want. So uh, anyway, I just I just felt that if if, if I had voted previously to, to put five thousand in the pot to support this, I was withdrawing it because I think there's a lot of issues that this town needs to to uh, uh, decide on or provide guidance on. Uh, before we uh, under some something like this, uh, I guess my. Oh. I think Dave is next up. Wait. I I guess look, I had a question for the manager. So mm -hmm. does that mean that currently then uh, the deadline of the fifteenth to submit anything further for that scope of? We'll have more time. Well, more time, right? Yes. So all right. So I. That's what we <laughs> I just wanted to clarify that. Yeah, yeah because we, were th we thought we were right. working under a tighter deadline. Right. And now we actually do have this. A then more time, we can actually bring it back to the joint boards right. as well. On the yeah. 31st. So yeah. about, about almost a month, about a month before it's due, coming yes. back to us too. And yes. yeah. Yeah, I guess my understanding is that the study is comprehensive and broad. And I guess my concern about putting it before, I guess I, I'm a, I think the advantage of getting the research out in front of the community before opening up the debate is that then we have <coughs> factual information rather than a lot of passion and um, people's emotions getting mixed up without having an outsider coming in and saying, well, this is, here's what your demographic is, here's what the study shows, here's what your departments have. I just, you know, the pattern seems to be that it's a lot of emotional response and um, not necessarily complete uh, information. Mm -hmm. But I think, that, see, that's that's my concern is that you, you have to see what, what we're sending to the consultant. Which I think we're going to go into. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah the, no, key is, the key right. is the scope. And that's key. If we don't have the yeah. appropriate scope, yeah. then you know, yeah. the data fire that would be helpful. And and two of them are not paid for by the town. The heavy, the heavy equipment is, but the rest of it is not. Right. So no matter what the village of Saxon River and the town of Rockingham choose to do, and the town of Rockingham's fire department choose to do, they will, some way, shape, or form, have an impact on the village of Bells Falls. So it's important. So in my my thing understanding is that it's important that all of our needs get met. All of our needs get met. So I agree. the towns, I agree. the village of Saxon River, which is separate from the municipality, has their own fire department. Whether they want or will get in another fire department, another uh, fire station is something to be said, and that'll come up in study. And what the village of Sec uh, Bellas Falls needs at this point, and what it will have to cope with if things change in those other two fire departments. So, yes, it'll get back to us in January. We'll all get to see what's there, and we still still have time. Your needs, concerns can be submitted to spot. So we have to wait. Everybody weighs in. Steph, I want to give you an opportunity to say. Well, you know, everybody deserves the best that we can provide, but it's also the best that we can afford. And the perfect example of that is when I served on the select board, we had a gentleman or an individual at the time was advocating for a salt shed. And we were looking at over 
uh, almost a million exactly. dollars, while it was an equivalent over in New York State that sold for, I think, 19,000. All we had to do was go over there and disassemble it and bring it back and reassemble it. Well, currently, right now, there's, unless it's expired at the moment, we've had success with the site. There's a Quonset Hut style building over there, like I think it was 60 by 40. And I think the last time I viewed that, it was up to like 21,000. I mean, um, you know, and, and then you, just, you pick up the newspaper and you see these Butler buildings for sale, um, 70 by 100, and they want, uh, you know, 110 grand for them. I mean, you can do a lot if you get creative and try to get the maximum amount out of your dollar. Um, I've, I've gone out there a couple of times. In fact, uh, a friend of mine, Jim, was out there, and I spoke with him a lot. He passed away here this past year. But, um, you know, a million dollars for a fire station is a lot of money, and is it, is it really necessary? If you're going to be housing, you know, four or five trucks, I mean, there are, are other alternatives. And, I mean, I've certainly been on the road and gone to a lot of fire stations in the last... Uh, 15 years here in the tri-state area and um, you know, um, I think there people need to be flexible again Scott hit on it two meetings ago here um, uh, everything's going up in price and it's, you have to make it affordable too I think not partial participant giving us factual information about what our needs are without emotion without the history is important. So, yeah, so we'll see that again in January. Are we all done discussing this item at this point? And is there anything else? No, that was it. Okay. okay. That's great. Thank you, Scott. Much appreciated. The first thing on the agenda is the water quality update. So we've been chasing this problem. We put some information on our website and we thought originally that we were just having a discolored water issue just because of the turnover in the tank and we went through and typically that happens some you know in that June to October time period you might see some elevated levels of manganese in the water but it's normally not anything that causes significant concern but the problem has persisted well past that time period and we're still having issues so we've, we've been been doing some additional testing. We've tested all the water at the pond up until where it comes into the pump house. And all of those tests come back at acceptable limits. So we're not getting manganese directly from the source. But then when we test um, the water that's gone through treatment and then goes back out through distribution, the levels are going up. And that's where we're getting these unacceptable levels that are now going through the pipes and we're getting into people's homes and staining clothes and creating just that sort of you know, discolored water that you've been seeing now for really this this has been going on almost since Thanksgiving. Yes, yeah, Jeff had said. Actually, yeah. I had several people contact me. No, I've had quite a few. They mentioned it. They've noticed it as far back as like August. So, so. yeah, the, the summertime is usually the turnover and that that's a traditional, you know, sort of weather and inversion kind of problem. But this is... It's, this has gone well past that. So now we're trying to figure out is we're trying to trace the source. It's not coming, you know, we can, like I said, we're meeting limits up and until we go through the pump house. And then when we test from various locations from the pump house up in the distribution, we're getting the unacceptable levels. Okay, Let so me ask, um, is Brian back there now? Or? Oh, yeah. He is. Oh, no, he's I mean, been back. He's got a lot of experience. So should I be filtering my water? Because I usually just drink it right out of the tap. At this point, no, it's not a concern but it's more we're trying to chase a problem than determine do we have to do additional <coughs> chemical treatment, which there are options for that. And, and we've looked at that and we've done some preliminary testing to see if that would help. And it's, it's decreased the levels, but it's still above the readings that it should be at this time of year. So we're still chasing the problem. And that's from filtration. filtration and that's test. after filtration. Yeah. So it's gone so, through processing. At that so point. when it comes into the plant, it's, it's, in, it's, it's within, within, within the boundaries. Correct. But when it comes out, it's not. It's right. higher. Are the concentrations consistent throughout town at this point? No, yeah. they're not. Because I've just started noticing the past couple of weeks. No, they vary. Yeah. Uh, okay. so, so, um, I had a picture, somebody sent me, um, I know, on Facebook sent me, and it looked almost brown, at least around the color of this manila envelope. Oh. And um, in my own faucet, I'm noticing it being barely colored, yeah. but still colored. Yeah. It's manganese. Manganese is, huh. is the major problem. So I guess the report at this point is to say, I don't have it isolated to a specific 
uh, source. We haven't been able to determine where it is occurring. And we have started, like I said, we've started various chemical uh, testing to see is there a way to get rid of it with um, introducing this potassium for, for Perborate? Yeah, per, or something I can't pronounce. It. Permanganate. Permanganate. Oh, permanganate. Okay. I always pronounce it wrong. Thank you. And and so we're working with that. Like I said, we've done a couple of rounds with various levels to see if that would eliminate it. It's still being persistent, but it's you know above acceptable limits as it leaves the plant. So we're again doing more testing this week and more experimentation and I'll keep you in the loop and hopefully we'll see this problem resolved so I can give you, you know, some better news the next time we get together. But as you do, I'm sure I, I have been receiving periodic complaints from people and I'm sure you will see yeah. The best we can do is update them and tell them what we've done, what we're trying to trace and the fact that it's not a concern. There's no health concern, it's just unpleasant. And in some concentrations it does stay in people's clothes and laundry which yeah. creates some real uh, you know aggravation i understand that okay. part of it as well so all right anything else yes okay. oh i'm sorry yes sir um yes, oh, and your name sir for the Mike thank you mm -hmm. a little call you wrote thanks and uh, it hasn't been that way just for this year the last year it was that way and the year before. Um, it's it, it, what are we doing to are we entertaining hiring a professional to come in? We have an engineer who's working with us who's doing water quality. Them. So we're following his water quality. He's isolating locations for testing. So we're following the protocol. It's not we're we're like I said, we're introducing and, and taking away various components to see if we can try to isolate. But so far, we haven't been able to get it to a specific problem. But if the water's, if the water's acceptable, more than acceptable coming from the pond, and it runs through the facility, and then the, and then the, the uh, parts per million spike, doesn't that give you a, a clue? If, if it was a, in a traditional sense, because the plant, don't forget, goes through multiple types of filtration, Right. So you have to look at each of the each of those to determine how it, how the water is as it approaches, and then we test it after it's gone through. So we haven't been able to isolate it to a specific process, and then we test it when it comes out through distribution. It's at a different level, so it's not consistent and different throughout the distribution chain. Yeah, I've seen it at various points in time. You know, um, we all live in different locations. I see it sometimes in South Street and heavier concentrations. And I've seen yeah. you know, this past week, for some reason, it seems to be darker. I don't know why. Oh. Last week, it was much clearer. With my, so, but it is still being tracked. And we do have an engineer that we're working with. And I hope to have at least some idea of where this is originating and, and at least a course of treatment that I can share with you. And hopefully that resolves our problem. I was just gonna ask uh, Mr. Fredat. Mr. Fredat, what uh, at your location being probably one of the closest users up there. Mm -hmm. To what I mean how for lack of a better term, how bad is it? Well how mm -hmm. noticeable. Last last year when uh, when I came down to see Chuck about it, I actually had probably in the in the uh, in the toilet tank, I had about a quarter of an inch of it that had settled, and I didn't realize it. And I just happened to open it one day and look in there, and it was it was like a quarter of an inch of it in the bottom of the tank. So that's so then I then so so every month now I plug my hot water heaters. I, I flush the main coming in first to make sure that it's clear, but then it doesn't last very long. So I'm wasting water. I'm paying more water, paying more. Using more water. Using more water, so I'm paying more, more for bill. And trying to keep it out of my house because I've got brand new fixtures because I redid my old inside of my house. And now it's starting to stain everything. And and uh, it, the, basically on the street, it's it, it's... It's pretty, it's pretty prudent on the street because I, 
talk to the neighbors next door and they they never drink their water because it's it's consistently tainted even during the summer yeah. and then everybody's buying water in town but they're afraid to drink the water they don't want to they don't want to consume the maggots so when you talk about a half like a half an inch whatever you're talking about sediment in the bottom sediment thing? in the bottom sediment, sediment. yeah that's what I meant. okay so if it's there, it's going to be hot water heater. It's going to be everywhere. Yeah. Okay. I hope they find it soon. Yes. I'll keep you in the loop. Yeah. I think I'm even going to filter my water <laughs> until you figure it out. Just in case. Okay. If, we're, if we're good, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda. Uh, public safety. We have Two parts. The USDA radio grant is the first. So this this originated back in in 2021, and then it it was the uh, USDA had some staff turnover, and it sort of sat un, unresolved. And then we have a new coordinator coordinator with USDA, and so now it has been uh, reinvigorated. The problem is when we did the original cost estimating and project um, scope, the prices, as you can imagine, we did them on based on 2020 pricing, and now we're at 2023 pricing because we're into a new model year. So the prices of the baseline equipment went up, as well as at the same time, USDA has a uh, requirement and a standard for interoperability that we were not meeting with some of our uh, radio systems. So what this proposed upgrade will also do then is give us the ability when we have multiple uh, responders on a scene, they'll be able to do, um, at least from a digital standpoint, they can, they can find frequencies that they can operate on within the same response. Um, again, some, sometimes there's a challenge, especially when you have some of these large multi-jurisdictional responses, you might have four or five different departments on scene, each of them on a different channel trying to communicate all, trying to coordinate, it can get kind of chaotic and that doesn't include police or public works if they're also called into a scene. So with all that being a precursor, we did apply and received approval for a federal grant, which is the good news. But in order to bring us fully up to compliance, we have to spend a little bit more money. And that's where this comes to this board in two phases. For the USDA portion, the village <coughs> has to be the uh, applying agency because we qualify based on, on, uh, on income uh, more than <coughs> qualify through the town. And to bring the police and DPW and both fire, all, well, actually be all three fire, Departments into compliance, the total project cost went up to about $103,000. Um, USDA has a, has a fixed amount that they reimburse. Um, so they'll have a, a $50,000 uh, reimbursement. So it's basically a 50% grant. And then <clears throat> the two phases that we still have to acquire, and we still have to get the town to approve the highway to pay their portion as well as then we'll have some additional money that the police would also have to pay. They all, all of our repeaters share a tower. So it would make sense to do this as one contract so they can pay this guy to mobilize and demobilize one time and change out all of the basic equipment one time as opposed to paying multiple vendors to come and do it at different times. So with that is sort of the background that was the request, and I guess we're looking for two specific uh, resolutions from the board. The first would be to apply for the grant, and then the second would be for the payment of the specific portion that would be uh, payable through the village. Now, this might sound like an eligible candidate for some ARPA funding. I would think it's infrastructure, correct? It could be considered, yeah. I mean, based on what mm -hmm. we do with our ARPA funds, we also have plenty of money you know, in our reserve reserve funds. So we do? Yes. yes. But that's taxpayer dollars as opposed to the, the federal grant. So, right. um, well, the, okay. what I, you know, we've got this 
and it says 68,800. That's not our portion. Ours is the 18,833 and 34,367. So what ends up happening because again so, yeah, that's what I want I want it that's right so the town will actually pay through the equipment fund for the portion of the grant that's reimbursable because that is part of what the equipment grant does mm -hmm. the fire equipment but it has to be reimbursed to the village because the village has to be the applicant the portion outside of the grant that would not be eligible from the town is the portion that has to pay for the police uh, repeater and that's the separate number that we were talking about in these two motions and the two motions correct well yeah because here's here's why you know I, like i said i i pay taxes in both places mm -hmm. okay so if we got one hundred and three thousand, mm -hmm. and the bells falls village can get fifty thousand from the grant not Rockingham, not Saxon River. Bells Falls gets 50,000. Okay. And then, so let's say then there's at least 53,000 that we have to fund internally. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we know if the police, if our police and fire get allocated, separately we pay 100 percent of that if rockingham fire gets a piece of it we pay 70 percent of that or 65 percent of that okay and so what i want to see is all right who let, let's look at you know Rural Rockingham, Dulles Falls, and Saxon River in terms of who's getting what and who's paying what. That, that's the part, because it seems like, because we're contributing 50,000 that the other two parties don't qualify for. Mm -hmm. That, uh, as I see here, what you're saying in these votes is, is how much do you want the, the village to pay? Is it is it 30? So the village, yeah, the, the, the Bellows Falls Village Corporation would pay 34367 and that would fund the police department for their repeater purchase and installation. Because we're going to buy three of these repeaters. We're going to buy 20 of the P25 compliant radios. The police have radios already in their cars that can be programmed. Um, and then there's a variety of, of cabinets and other but, wiring but Scott, it's, that so it's, in other words, Bells Falls is going to, they're going to get 50000 for the grant, plus pay 34300 Okay, so there's 84367 Right. And then the rest of it, we're going to pay whatever the village pays, about right. 65% of it. It just, it just doesn't seem... Well, the town highway is going to pay 34000 because that's that's going to be their their repeat right and we pay we we fund and 65 inevitably you, you pay a portion of that right because right mm -hmm. town we're all okay. taxpayers yeah. and so then from a just in order to keep the grant from the uh not being ineligible we have to break out the allocation sort of in an awkward way I'm not disputing what you're saying, but that, that got us to the maximum amount that we were allowed for reimbursement, which was the 50,000. So at the end of the day, we're getting a 50% contribution on the $100,000 investment. And then we're, in addition, we're asking for. You know, but how, if, if, the, if, the, if the town's paying 34 <coughs> and we're getting 50 from the grant, what are we paying 34? That says, that's like 68 plus 50 is, that's a lot more than that. So why, right. you know, what, I, what I'm saying is that, that, the, that the village in, in calculating this thing, uh, we're the ones that qualify for 50,000. And I think that, you know, what's, what is the, 
What is the Saxon River Village being asked to pay? They don't qualify, do they? They don't, I thought, that I said they, they don't get any of this equipment. No, they don't. They'll get two radios. Yeah. Two radios. And they're paying for those right separately. They'll be, they'll be contributing. What are they contributing? Yeah. We haven't asked Saxon River for any money because it's fire equipment money ultimately. It's kind of like the same thing we did with yeah. the um oh check, talk about town. the town pay for the town. Right. We got a hundred and two thousand for three repeaters and fifty thousand for the twenty radios. So that's where you get your one fifty four from. That's the total all in price. All right. So then if you take the fifty thousand off, off the top, you still got you still gotta pay the hundred roughly it's a hundred and three, which is split between EPW, police, and fire. I believe Jake was out there paying for two of their radios. We're paying, you know, the village is, is, is subsidizing this thing. And I don't think it's, I, I think it should be a. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, <clears throat> the, this project is being broken out into two of part A and part B. Uh, everything that's not eligible for the grant, the separate project, it's not even in the queue because it can't be. So the police department has done thirty-four thousand dollars for its own repair and install. Saxon Zerber not eligible, so their repairs <coughs> are not even part of the grant request or submission. So those <coughs> are paid. Uh, police department pays for its own communications equipment. All of the fire department equipment is paid for by the town, by uh, the fire equipment committee, the, the interdepartmental agreement that the town covers all equipment. <clears throat> the, I thought it was just the trucks. There's, there's, there's a list of things. Left. There's a list of things that it actually covers, not but just the trucks. Yeah. Other major items. So, so, um, so the grant has everything that's eligible in it um, up to uh up to enough to um uh, gain the maximum the fifty thousand dollar grant amount and so that includes all of the bells falls fire department equipment <clears throat> plus the radios for the town of rocking and <clears throat> the met so so that's all of bells falls fire department stock is, is in the grant and the local match bells falls isn't paying a share of that because that uh, interdepartmental agreement. So everything in the Bells Falls um, is is covered in that grant. There's a um, yeah, but you're not answering my question here. You're saying what I'm saying is the you've got uh, you've got the uh, police department Bells Falls pays mm -hmm. their share. Okay. Right. So project. The fire to all the fire equipment, okay, comes out of this fire fund, which Bell's Falls pays its full pro rata share. Okay. You follow me? So we're hundred percent of this piece, we're the full pro rata share of this piece, plus, thank you very much. We're providing fifty thousand dollars. What's the Bell's Falls pro rata share that you're paying? Anything you in the two thirds of the fifty thousand is that what you think? That's what anything you're in the five cents on the dollar. Anything in the equipment fund is funded by the tax Rockland Air taxpayer. Yes, right. We are and we pay we pay a full share of the Rockland Air tax. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So my feeling is, you know, we got to feel like our police department. We got to. We ought to take advantage of this grant money to offset the Bell's Falls cost of the that's illegal. The, the the Bell's Falls equipment, the fire department equipment is not eligible for this grant. We're talking about the police department. Yeah, the police department is not eligible for the um, fire equipment grant. It's a USDA fire grant. We're we're adding on the other pieces for the interoperability standard, which is again a federal standard. And also to avoid paying multiple contractors to do basically the same up and down the same tower to, to install the repeaters for the same basic benefit. But 
Okay, I can see paying the, the did you have you want to speak to well, right, let me just clarify. Uh, okay, sure. I'll wait my turn. I do because I don't think I'm explaining myself properly, but I understand what you're trying to say. So in other words, Dallas Falls has to pay the thirty-four thousand for the fee stuff. So gonna buy you a repeater on that tower, a new one. Okay, all the stuff necessary to make it work. Okay. And that's the only thing we have to fund. Right. But you also have to approve the grant because we are the submitter of the grant because we're eligible. So, we, we so what's that cost? So that's doesn't cost you anything. Nothing. But nothing. The, the piece about the eighteen thousand eight hundred thirty three dollars and twenty eight cents, if the town is already using their equipment fund to pay for Rockingham Fires piece and Saxon River is going to get two radios out of it, why does Bellows Falls have to participate with eighteen thousand eight thirty three? Technically, our fire department should receive the same large equipment grant opportunity or usage opportunity for expenditure through the town of Rockingham as the Rockingham Fire Department and the Saxon River Fire Department. Received. So, I agree with a separate repeater for the Bell's Falls Fire Department, Police Department. I get that, but the 18,000 that doesn't make sense to me since you're paying for the others. Think Rockingham's and you think going to give two radios well, to Saxon River? We don't even pay thirty-four thousand dollars for their portion, right? Yeah. And 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 BF <clears throat> Police is going to pay thirty-four thousand for their right repeater, repeater, right? And then the other thirty-four thousand, which is the fire repeater and the radios, goes to the equipment fund. Right. Yeah. So, so what's the eighteen thousand? Yeah. So what's that for? We shouldn't pay that based on upon the logic you just presented. <coughs> The equipment fund should handle all of the radios and the repeater for fire. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that's uh, um, items that are ineligible. It's not equipment, it's uh, labor, it's fees for mm -hmm. inspections and licensing. So, so none of the repeater equipment is being paid for by Bellas Falls, but the share that includes uh, licensing, inspection fees, uh, labor, None of that can be part of the grant. But that's not what it says in the motion, Gary. The motion says the 18,833.28 is for 16 P25 compliant two way radios, one repeater, and two antennas. So in there, it doesn't say we're paying just for labor. And if, and if Rockingham Volunteer Fire Department isn't, it has to pay their own labor. And see what I'm saying? Why should we? Well, they get raised from the motion just for the to submit the grant out. That's not what it says. It's one of the the grant. Grant. It says and it says look for in a local commit to local match of eighteen thousand eight thirty three point eight. Oh, but but then the town pays the local match. Right. But that makes it sound like we are committing to it. You do have to commit to it because you're the applicant, yeah. but the town it's a pass which will be reimbursed by the okay. Yes. So that's why you should so be I would have that language for that motion. Yeah. I'm sorry, I see why we don't understand misunderstanding. The, the town's responsible for the match, but the town's not the applicant, so they can't guarantee right. it. Which will be reimbursed. Which will be reimbursed. Right. So yeah. if the town reneges on it, you're responsible, but oh well, then we're gonna have another conversation. I don't think anybody's planning. Yeah, that would that The police and fire and the, you know, this is so the bottom line is yeah. the we have to pay for the police part. Yes. And then everything else is paid. That's the only thing that Bell Swans is out of. Right. Right. So you have to authorize the grant for the full Amount that we have discussed, right? And then, and then the second re resolution is if you want to add to that resolution, you also say that the expenses to be reimbursed by the town, right? Upon, right, upon successful completion of the grant back mm -hmm. to the village, and the village then would also authorize 34,367 right. to pay for the police department portion of this project. If that makes sense. Yeah, that's the second one. Correct. And we'll have a town that they're meeting next Tuesday. They'll also have then a resolution for the town highway to do the 34,000 mm -hmm. and then to reimburse the village upon successful completion of the grant, the additional amount so that all those funds come back. Mm -hmm. That is the additional amount. So the first motion is amended, the second one is on. So what is right. the first motion is on which page? It's on the first page. It's fine. But we need to add. 
Right, which will be reimbursed by the town of Rockingham upon successful completion of the grant. Is that correct? Yes. So if it's not successful, we lose it. If it's not successful, I probably won't be here because you won't be able to communicate with your police, fire, or DPW. Mm -hmm. So it'll be absolute chaos. So, so it's, this it's, will work. This will work. Yes. <laughs> if you look at page two, for just above the motion is a breakdown of um, the costs that um, so that so the license fees and labor is that the um, share the village share is six thousand three hundred sixty six but that also is what's covered by the town because it's considered right it says the town is get it was a okay. Okay. I'd like to make a motion really oh, I, I'd like to speak to this oh yeah wait let me make the motion then please speak okay yeah go ahead good. I'd like to make the motion that we authorize the municipal manager to execute application and documents for a USDA Rural Development Community Facilities Grant to purchase 16 T25 compliant two-way radios, one repeater, and two antennas, and commit to the local match of $18,833.28, which will be reimbursed to the village by the town of Rockingham upon successful completion of the grant. Seconded. Okay, now discuss, please. So I, I, I too was confused when I read all this. I mean, somewhat. So I actually went and spoke to the fire chief today regarding this. Mm -hmm. So I, he, he did his best to explain it because he understands it pretty well. Uh, but I wanted to clarify, first of all, there, this says 20 radios in Saxon River is getting forward. Right. Yes. Oh, not two. Well, a minute ago you said they weren't getting any. No, I said that there was none in the grant for Saxon Square. Right. It's all coming out of the, the town equipment. The town will be a post no Saxon Square radius can be in the grant. They're ineligible for the community. Yes. Which is why this says 16 and the second page says 20. Yes. Correct. Okay. Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yep. Wait, what's the 25? Oh, I'm sorry, that's the 25. Jesus. I know. Yeah. Very, yeah. So the fire chief said that the original proposed grant amount for this, when it all started two years ago or whatever it was, was $48,000 roughly in round numbers. Correct. And Two years later, this equipment's actually going to cost us four thousand forty thousand eight thirty two, which leaves a balance of seventy one sixty seven. Mm. Which, in his opinion, should come back to that amount should stay with the village to offset the cost of the uh, police department repeater that's going to be part of the project. Oh, that's not our opinion. So. so <laughs> My question, I guess my question is, what, when's the deadline to apply for this? Friday. This Friday? <coughs> well, I think the way, certainly, uh, I'm not sure I understand that, but the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the way it, the way it shakes out, uh, uh, the fact that, that the, our fire, our police department uh, has to pay for their costs, and and thanks to the village, we get fifty thousand. Just and and then we pay everything else. Uh, we pay full share of uh, of the four for uh, the four that. Uh, yeah. It's actually very good. It's just, it, I mean, the, the village is subsidizing this transaction. And uh, well, the village eligibility is the only reason that it can even go forward to get to 50,000. Otherwise, we would have been. But you see, we don't need, well, I guess we do need. Absolutely. We, we need to put all this stuff together. Correct. Yeah, everybody needs to. So we do, in order to get to 50,000. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in other words, but. But that's a thank you very much from Dallas Falls. <laughs> the police doesn't need to be in there to get the 
thousand. The police and the town highway totally separate, not involved with the grant at all. But they do they need could have been done in different months. Yeah, we could okay. have come in different projects to present them. But because the repeaters are being installed together to save on labor and licensing, yeah. right. we did yeah. them all at once. Right. And they're all the same vintage of time. They're all interoperability. Yeah, yeah but the age of them repeaters up there are all 15, 20 plus years. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Right. So that's why so, now. So I like I like your uh, theory. Here. Yeah, the 70,000. Yeah, yeah, I get like it. <laughs> I think this sort of highlights some of the challenges when we talk about trying to maintain three departments and three levels of communication, yeah. and three levels of equipment. Like that. Speak of the yeah. So, if, a, so if, it was, if it was next year and the feasibility study come back and said, well, we only need two departments. This radios is will never go to waste. There's no, I know that. For the radios <laughs> right. Well, remember this repeater. There's three repeaters here. Yeah. One for BF fire. Right. The Rockingham one is for the highway department, Correct. not the fire department. Okay. It's, highway, it. it's highway public works. Used by, yeah, exactly. Right. And then the belt police department. And then the, the third one is for all Is there a reason why they don't all work on the same repeater at different frequencies? Various um, frequencies. Yeah. 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 Different, you know. Yeah. And it depends which direction you get your repeater. Within a narrow band of the spectrum, <laughs> so there's digital right. signals within that. Yeah. And it makes it easier for them to communicate with each other. You can get everybody to the same standard, which is this P25. And I've tried to read it, and it's ridiculous. It's a lot of it. Okay, so we have a we have a motion on the table. Um, we have a second. And we have a second. Right. Is there further discussion about the motion? If there is none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any, any uh, against? I hear none. We are good. Um, and now, what about the second motion? So we have the first run through of the fire reimbursement ordinance that we had talked about at the front meeting. So this is. Oh no no, we're not oh, done I'm with. Sorry. The, oh, no, so we're so not done do with the, the second. The right, police. second. My bad. Yeah. Let's jump the in. Thirty-four thousand. Yeah. Uh, this this is the one I have. I have a problem mm -hmm. because, you know, like I said, we're the village is is contributing fifty thousand to the town, and we have to, on top of that, pay a full share of the uh, of the police department's cost. Now, I, I know we're mixing apples and oranges to some extent, but it comes out to money. It comes out to money, and they're uh, they're out of the uh, But anyway, so if they were brought to us separately, though, right? I mean, these are two separate things. That right, they'd be all combined in the same grant. Yes. Right. right. So. Well, yeah. yeah. And it has to be that two well, by five. This but isn't it. part of it. Yes, it is. Right. It's, they're going to do the installs. Right. I understand. Time. Right. It's not part of it, but they're doing the installs well, the same same time, yes. but, you know, it's its right. own standalone item. As opposed to costing us more for a separate installation, right? So, yeah. Yeah. there is some savings, but I understand what Jake means. Yeah, Overall, no, I do too. Two birds in one stone, I guess. Three birds in one stone. Well, we could use our funds for it, Jake. We could merge. Cut that the hell out. Better right <laughs> don't buy a new car this year. No, but they, you know, the people that they're, they're getting the benefit of this from the Tall small uh -huh. taxpayers are the people that don't want to merge. Yeah, I know. Because right. they don't want to be part of the. So it's, yep. uh, we get we where the old fight comes from. We do. But screw. what do we do with this since it's due Friday? Does anyone want to make the motion? So, so you, can, you can't um, well, you can't mix and match what's in the grid right. and use money for other things. It's illegal in federal funds. And um, your staff will be in jail and you won't be able to I'm sorry, what are you what are you trying to explain? Well so so if you want to take advantage of what, what Jigs is talking about, typically what um, grant sponsoring agencies do is charge a fee to the subgrantees to the others. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I'll go ahead and since we're having a lot of discussion, I'll make the motion to authorize $34,367 from the VF Police Department for their repeater purchase and installation. Is there a second to that motion? I will second. For the discussion on the motion. <coughs> Does anyone want to amend the motion to designate where the money comes from? Just saying. I guess I'm here today. Um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? No. That's me. Okay. So, yes, motion so passed. Anyway, moving on. Now we're on to the ordinance. So. We had discussed this at our last uh, tri board meeting. This basically mirrors the existing town ordinance, but adds the um, enforcement article, which is the article nine, which then allows the people that are delinquent to pursue them with legal action. Things that they are billed and don't pay, give us a way to uh, try to get some relief. So that's this this BS twenty four BSA section one ninety. Is that the nineteen seventy four? Nineteen seventy four. That's, that's the that's state the, law that off that gives us that. Yeah. Okay. And the other meeting, didn't we have some discussion that we would have a fee schedule in this? I will have the fee schedule. If you notice, I put this would just be the first attempt at it. We would have it back okay. to you in January. Okay. And at the January meeting, I, I would bring you the fee schedule. All right. Okay. So all I want to do is introduce it tonight so yeah. we could have it published and give people a chance you know, to come in January 10th if they wanted to participate and then try to adopt it so it would be effective in April. Okay. And do board members have questions on it as it is right now? Well, the fee schedule should be adopted with it in its entirety. Right. It will be in January. Yeah, right. we're January. not adopting okay. it tonight. No. 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 All right. We'll just add it and I'll have yep. it for you in January. So this, this will be a village ordinance? Yes. It yes. Is. Separate from the town. It'll so be a separate same yeah. basic language because it's right. drafted. Okay. Right. But like where it says Rockingham Select Board, it'll say Balls Falls Trustees. So it's, yeah still needs to be cleaned Something up. like that. Yep. There was I think there was a place where it had to say select board I don't remember why I was reading. Most most of it is Bella's fault, but there was one piece of it. Well, on the last page six under B, yeah. it says Rockingham Select Board, and then below it, the appeals process is Rockingham Municipal okay. Manager. Yeah, I don't understand why it needs to be there because yeah, the trustees have all the powers of the. I would, yeah, that one I, I will take out. I missed that one. Uh, Miss it. Yeah, so it's in there twice. Yeah, so I will take that one out. So that, that you're right. That one should be village. Good job. Thank you, Wade. We'll see this again in January. Let me ask you a question. With, with the schedule for the um, schedule of fees. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so um, the fees or fines as received, where would they go and what would they be spent for? Do they like going to a special for <coughs> purchase of certain equipment? Or when they go straight to the fire department? Straight to the I don't know where do they go right now. The ones for the town go the to the equipment committee, they go to the equipment fund. Oh, the equipment, yeah, which is shared by the three. So, department. most of them okay, so, for things like illegal burns or responses right, right. to accidents. So, so, you know what that means that means that the town gets access to that. Any fees we collect go straight into the fire equipment committee, uh, funding, and that means it's town, not village anymore. Just no, so not necessarily know. your own ordinance, you can go wherever you want it to go. The town That's true. It for the towns. Right now, the town goes into that. Right. I mean, it would make sense for us to do that, but it means that it winds up being the town's funds, just to be clear. You could have it go to your fire department operating fund. You don't necessarily yes, have to use to buy four radios for section of the fire. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, yeah. if it goes right. under the current program, that it could end up, like you said, yeah. most anywhere. Yeah, that's true. Right. So, Bell's Falls had an incident that generated $3,500 in revenue. Uh -huh. It goes into that pot. Right. Who knows where that Three goes. years later, it might end up in Saxon River on Main Street. Yeah, we don't. Why don't we put it into the? I mean, I'm just saying. I, that's why. Well, we can. You can we can specify that in your ordinance. Can spe specify that in the ordinance. Yeah. Could do that with your schedule of fees and just have it in there. But should we do it now, or should we wait till the next time? We can modify it in January. I mean, the flip side of that is, yeah. 
if Rockingham or well, if Rockingham generates thirty five hundred dollars at an incident, it goes into the pot, and it right. could get it could get used in Bella Falls. Sure. That's true. We we don't know that. I just want to be clear. So that's, what? That, exactly. That becomes a a pot for all five months. I think we should amend it now to have it go <laughs> to the uh, the revised copy we get in Jan January. As a yeah, rather than revising in January. As um as a well, member of that fire committee, what do you think of that? Wait. <laughs> Being devil's advocate and all. Oh, I started it. Of it just being dedicated to Bell's Falls. Uh -huh. well, if you it's look the at the same thing I think about everything else, this stuff we just talked about. I know, yeah. Ago. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you look at Article okay. Six, okay, section four. Currently the revenues go two different places. Any, oh. any charges for equipment or materials. So if you put down speedy dry or something else or foam, yeah. that goes to the equipment fund. And charges for personnel goes to the department itself, which provided the service. Right. Yeah. That's the distribution now. <coughs> Is that what you are anticipating or are you anticipating something different? Right, because right. So if you bill for if you bill for a fire apparatus being at the scene of an incident for four hours and it generates a thousand bucks, just like that, like right now that in Rockingham, that would go to the pot if it gets paid, it would go to the equipment fund Correct. as a revenue. And then that could be technically used to offset the cost of a truck that we all bought. Right. In theory, that's what it's supposed to do is provide an opportunity to provide so, to build that fund. The flip side of it is if we make it just dedicated to our own pot here in the village, okay. then, it, then somebody could look at that and say, well, you know, we're not going to. You don't need any money from out here. Yeah. That's, yeah, I would, that's I, true, too. I don't I think know. If, it, if it's written that way, where the reimbursement for equipment costs go into the equipment fund, and then reimbursement personnel the costs goes to the department. Goes to the department. That makes that's, sense. That's, yeah, I'd, I'd leave it. However, yeah. however, 4A under Article 6 says revenues received from charges for equipment, materials, or fire warden services. Fire warden services. He gets paid fees for those, does he not? I don't believe he does. I don't believe he pays for it. Well, he charges for it. Okay, he charges for it. Yes. Yeah, but the fees come to the town. At least the it is when I was on the select. Right. Yeah. But we don't technically have fire warden services here. Well, Do we? it encompasses the whole town. <laughs> I, I guess we are. Yeah, I believe the fire chief here is a deputy one. Deputy one, yeah. Okay. I believe. Okay, so that so A and B makes sense. Um, yeah, and then you want to schedule fees to go back to the right. Okay. So would you, would you make that Article Ten? We just added a schedule. It's an attachment. Yeah, it's a schedule. Right. That's right. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion on? Right. Next, we get to the heavy green this bill, Mike Rack's proposal. Listen, okay. <laughs> this also came at your joint board meeting and was a recommendation from the Walk Bike Committee. And so, the, my understanding is that this would go in if the village is. So inclined, it would be done later in the spring or early summer. And it would take away, you know, you see the location that was being proposed. So they need all they need all that twenty feet for that uh, bike rack. Fifteen by twenty. It's I know the bike rack looks kind of tiny compared to well, they got a staircase space. coming into it, right? Six plus feet. Yeah, that was the staircase. Already there? Yes, it's yeah. already there. It's about hand rails. Yes, the little hand and, and little steps. Mostly, I mean, right yeah. now you can't see the grass. Mm -hmm. And there's bushes on either side. But what's this sheeting over here? It's just to show you where the hill is that goes, where the steps are. Oh, it says the staircase steps? access. The steps go up to the park. Yeah. Well, they go up to the park. Yes, they go right okay. to the park. Okay, you walk up them steps on the little bay level of the park. To the park. Okay, all right. 
we must say those little flex posts don't look like they're going to sell the car. Well, they are, they are removable, and the idea would be that if you were, if this is not successful or at some point in the future, people said they wanted the parking back, you would take it away. Yeah. It, also, it would be a permanent actually. install. It's a hell of a lot more effective than pouring a big, you know, concrete footer and entering yeah. that thing. Well, the, there's also plowing concerns. There's also some plowing issues. Mm -hmm. That's why they're removable. So we won't see them until May. Otherwise, yeah. 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 <laughs> so I'm married to Mike. Yeah. Once the ice melts, you might see them. Yeah. Is this one or two parking spaces? 15 feet is, seems wider than one. It's like two. Well, yeah. I think there's I think there's only one there permanent because I think the other it's a wider space than normal because it, it, it's on that edge right there. So I don't think it's a traditional. 15 yeah. by 18 yeah. foot parking space. Now, isn't there some steps to go up to the bank? Those are over. over, they're not they're over there, right. yeah. yeah. They're over there, yeah, to the right for the. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and this 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 doesn't cost the village anything. This will be no. No, it's not funded by the village. It's town highway funds to, to install oh, and to you do get to pay for it. bike rack. Yeah. <laughs> and, <laughs> The only thing you might be losing, Jigs, is if somebody paid for a permit and they like that spot. And they like that spot, yeah, right. exactly. We'll do this one less spot for a derelict vehicle park here. <laughs> so, what do you think? I don't know. I looked at it today. I actually stopped, but I think it's worth a try. Do we have to sign over some? Yeah, I don't know. License to them that they get to use that space until such and such date. Future. I think because we're looking at this as a as a pilot, I would recommend that we just do it as a pilot and see how much utilization it really gets and how much of a pain in the ass it might be. Yeah. And decide maybe this is not something we want in the future, or if it's wildly successful, we'll leave it and come up with a license agreement to make it more permanent. But I think for now, I would just make it as a pilot and, and yeah. see how it goes. At the moment, I don't know if Stephen was bringing it up too, but whether the um, farmers market will want to use. The Hedgehog Park next year, and I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people don't park there to set up, <laughs> but well, they won't be able to do next year on the pilot. I'm curious mm -hmm. as to why they chose that specific location. I mean, it doesn't say, but I think the idea is hopefully people would, would use the park if they mm -hmm. would you know, be able to you know, use the stairs and go up and use the park. That's the idea. Yeah. It's kind of protected there, too. It is, yeah. Well, it's I, I, it's, yeah. Kind of, yeah. It's got lawn on two sides, so it's safer than putting it somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. So if it's chained up, your bike shouldn't go anywhere, right? That's the thought. Yes. So do you need a motion for us to do this, to um, to I, approve I, the pilot I project? I would just at least get a consensus of the board to approve the pilot project, and then we can revisit it at some point in the future, and then a determination if we want to make a permanent installation. So. Is the board in favor of doing this as a pilot project? Yes. I don't see any negatives, so I think we're good. All right, then we will we'll go forward and see what we see. Right. My only complaint is that anybody, my car seem to think was town property, so does it? <laughs> now, did anybody run this by the, uh, the bank? Uh, just in terms of community relations. I know they spoke to the bank, but I will make sure before we do the install next spring that I'll go up there and walk into it and show this specifically before we do this. Yeah, conference. I don't think they've had any problems with that no. at all. It's just a good neighbor kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It just doesn't appear. And this is furthest, basically, except for the back a lot. It's the furthest away it could be from the bank right there. As far oh, yeah. as spots. Maybe a custom will come over the yeah. On their bike? Yeah. Yeah. Could be open up a new market. Could be a revenue opportunity. Maybe just put a lace hand right there. <laughs> also, spot you. Uh, all right, number four on the agenda is the North Westminster District 5 follow up. And what we have to So, I just wanted bills. to give this to the board with, with a follow up that our attorney is drafting some correspondence to the district. And as you can see, based on the, on the uh, modifications that you made last spring to our um, our ordinance, we are now uh, charging interest on the past due amount. So I wanted to make sure that you saw that 
actually has to is now accruing interest. It should also be part of the attorney's letter. So this will be our first attempt at collection using our attorney and mm -hmm. keep you informed as that goes forward as to how this is progressing. So with the <coughs> instead of applying interest to the invoices there, it's being done as a separate invoice. You have to track it that way. Mm -hmm. So, so the letter will be done. This will be presented. Is that how it will go at that point? Um, they received a copy of this. All right. So it's been mailed. Okay. So did, does it go to the town of Westminster or to the address here? It goes to the address there to their treasurer. Yeah. Is, that, is that their actual treasurer or is that that person in North Westminster who doesn't have a job any longer? That, is, that was That's, the last person that yeah. they informed us as to who their treasurer is. Now, yeah, so we have a CC we talking to Westminster Town. The attorney will be doing that as okay. part of the correspondence. The, the, uh, have we had discussions with the uh, district, with anybody at the uh, this district? Yeah, there was about a dozen of them in here last year. You went to a, North, uh, a Westminster. We went to the meeting. Westminster Town um, select board meeting. Right. <coughs> right. You told us about that. They there hasn't been anything no further from them. That. So I think the attorney has an idea of where this is going to go. So I'll keep you informed. And at some point, we'll have another conversation as to what we'll have to do in the executive session. But it's a little premature right now. Yeah. All right, then. So I just wanted the board to make sure that they know that this is progressing. How much it's yes. Um, number five is I believe you meant to put December 27th. Yeah. That's a Tuesday. Yeah. So I don't know what the board's feeling is, but with the holiday being that weekend and Christmas on that Sunday, I didn't know if you wanted to forgo your meeting on the 27th and then just have your next regularly scheduled meeting on the 10th. I'd be in the line to go with that. Makes sense. Yeah, and I'd be fine with that. Okay. So, Jake? Yeah. So, so, no okay, no so our next meeting would be the second Tuesday in January. So, that's that. That would be great. Thank you for that. We could definitely do that. So, with that be So, said, when would it be? The 10th of January? Yeah. So, okay. our next regular oh, right, scheduled so. village meeting will be Tuesday, the 10th of January. January 10th, 2023. Okay. okay. So, we, we will not be, checks, so for the public, we will not be meeting on December 27th. Who comes every two weeks or watches every two weeks. Um, we are canceling that meeting, regularly scheduled meeting. January 10th is the next meeting. And the joint or the tri board is the 31st. It is the 31st. Okay. January. Right. January. Is that, do we do that at uh, 6 30 or what is or it? Still, also six. Or still six, isn't it? Yes. yes. Same time, same, same bad time, same bad chance. Yeah. Would you yeah. prefer a, a later time, Jigs? Or no? Okay, I'll just, that's fine. Think okay. what works. <laughs> Whatever works. Okay. Item number six, I had added only because I wanted to make sure that we, especially with now not doing a, a December twenty seventh meeting, that we're back to doing our finances, uh, looking at our financials. The first meeting of our month, second Tuesday. So there is another copy. Scott was kind enough yes. to supply us with another copy, although it has the date questions. The last meeting at the end of November. I don't think much has changed. No. What? But um, if you have any, since we just got these, having any further questions from well, Melinda Scott, email right me or call me. Anyway. The only thing I know is real quick on the very first page was we got eighty four eighty for the cruiser. Yes. That's good. We did the um, auction. It's complete. It's still here though, is it not? Or is that gone? They were gone. gone. Coming last Friday, and I believe. Okay, they picked it up. up to then, I've seen four feet. Correct. I think they picked it up. Friday. I think it's gone. No, I believe it is. Yes. That was that was more than the last one, wasn't it? I think a little more. I think the last one was 70, 70 something. Yeah. So thank you thank me now. Thank me later. Why'd you buy it? No, I don't. Okay, just check. I you encouraged that for years. To, Did you bid the auction up, or were you like? I've done that. Well, no this time, but I no haven't. Comment. Done that. No comment. <laughs> Okay, so after the review, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. For all those on TV, no, I'm just joking. No, I'm just joking. Yeah. <laughs> Anyone have anything else for right now? <laughs> on the financials. On the financials. No. And any other questions, whatever. I, the only thing I would along, say is that when we do get the financials, mm -hmm. I'd like a balance sheet. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, no, 
What? We, the expectation is the first week of the, the first, first meeting, meeting of the month. We'll try to keep it consistent. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that then would move us on to reviewing agenda items for the next meeting, which is January 10th. And then we have everything at the moment. Uh, do you have anything you're thinking would actually happen in January? Well, we'll definitely have the ordinance back on yep. for the uh, fire reimbursement. Yep. Um, okay. We will probably start to talk about our budget calendar. Mm -hmm. And um, talking to the auditors about when they want to give us a, a presentation on the audit. I try to get some dates so we can have that as part of this discussion as well. So we'll, we'll work on that. For the, the audit completed? I don't, he doesn't have the draft yet. I've not seen this full draft. Okay. So, but I want to get a schedule from him that we can run by the board so we have plenty of time to go through it yeah. well in advance of the meeting. And as we're coming into the last year, um, on the ARPA fund planning, mm -hmm. I would like us to consider whether we want to think about our projects and whether we have received grant money enough for them. If we would like to earmark any of the money available um, for the forthcoming 12 months as we move forward. And we can always let it go if it doesn't it need it. But again, can we put that on a meeting coming up? We well, can talk about it. Yeah. Budget for, for, the, for the ARPA, the ARPA funds ARPA that funds. we have, yes. So we could consider what we parting it out or putting it into pieces of it. And again, if we receive grant money that covers a lot, all of it, of some project like an infrastructure piece, then we can just release them um, and back into and, and consider reallocating at that point. But just to see where we're headed on things. That's all. Yeah, and if you could, if you could share with us what the uh, time requirements are. Is it till the end of twenty twenty four, or right. is the end of twenty twenty four? And my my one of my questions would be if you, you we commit these funds at one point and then say for example we were to get a grant what happens to those funds that we designated for state project X as long as they haven't spent them and or re, well we can have we to reallocate and report them too yeah, once they're spent I have to report them to yes. the feds right okay so, sorry but we can always use them for example if we wanted to use them as a match and then if we get a grant. We um, find other sources, then we don't have to. We, can, the we could release that yeah. back into the pot. That's even if you go, if you find that out beyond the 24. <laughs> no, it's got to get spent. By it's got to be spent. spent by. Okay. So we have to have a plan. We in have place. to have a plan in place. So we have to have a year. Right. Contingency. They really haven't event. said. It's interesting. They have not said what happens if we don't spend the money. But I was of the under impression that we had to schedule with them what we were doing with the money by the end of 24, but we had until 2026 to actually spend the money. No. They oh, school was like that. That. oh, the school was like that. The that's my right. confusion. Sorry. Right. And that's $20 million. And I don't know how much of this left yet. Well, right. Because they, in this case, yeah. we've already got the school. Correct. They already have all the funds now, don't they? Don't they got A, they got A and B. I thought they already got C. I've asked for reports for the S and Let's see tomorrow. Um, but I do. So. The question is that the money has already been sent here. Uh, I, we, so. I thought it was. But anyway, Andy's know. putting something together. So we'll do that. That's a separate item. Okay, um, any review, reviewing items for the joint board meeting? We do have the feasibility study application will come up. Yes, the um, that's still. Yep. We'll have the update on that yep. with the research on the uh, with the uh, research that's going on now. So Maybe you'll hear back about the five people who are on the list who can't be added to the tax sale at this point. I, I, <laughs> It's starting to sound we like the whole hope. feasibility study money. We know? can only hope, but uh, they will not commit to a schedule of any of any sort. So my your guess is as good as mine. And because other people have already received their money, it just makes you wonder if they're ever going to receive those funds. There is no communication. Well, I get a hold of somebody to explain that you know we're going to be in the process of a tax sale, and is there a yay or nay? Do they, either they qualify or they don't qualify. We I would suggest at some point we talk to our state representatives yeah. because they put that language in the budget and passed the legislative language for that specifically. It's just like totally limbo. So this was done in Montpelier. <coughs> so I would assume Montpelier could undo it if they so choose. Yeah. Aren't we inviting them to a too. meeting in January or something? Um, I wasn't aware that we were going to. Yeah, we actually joint, went the oh, the joint board. We talked about that. We Trying talked to about get anybody to come. Right. We can certainly ask them. Yeah, get your calls out now. <laughs> I think it'd be it, it'd be important to you know list one or two items that are 
Sometimes they're, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. You see what, like, and see where they're headed, you know, and uh, possibly looking to see who's on what kind of committees to see what would be, if they, if we could make them, even if they came by Zoom, still a discussion. Right. Yeah. Even if it's from Pop Montpelier, you know, they don't have to drag their rear end down here. We can just. Oh, it's much easier for them to jump on Zoom. Though. Oh, yeah. That's what I do with all my monthly meetings. <laughs> right. It's too far. Yeah. So there's that. That's a good idea. I mean, they can tell us what they're planning for the upcoming year, that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. Anything, you know, anything else anyone can think of at the moment? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, review and approve orders, bills, and warrants. Motion to approve the orders, bills, and warrants is circulated here tonight. And, and a second, thank you. All those in any, any discussion on the warrants, you're all set. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 All right, and um, Scott has them. We've all signed them. Yes, thank you. Um, other business, Scott. All set. Thank you. Wait. Yeah, I got one question, uh, and I truly don't know what happened. I've been meaning to ask somebody. You'll know what happened uh, with the water main. Oh, yeah. Okay. We Jerry had Jerry. an old air release valve fail, and then that created a second failure about five feet away from where that was. So that created a leak in front of the carriage here. So that's what they were doing. So they, they fixed both of those, put a permanent shutoff on both, and then done. But then they had to dig up by the information booth. The old information booth, too, right? Yeah. Huh. So there's two specific failures within that one, I don't know, a couple hundred feet, though. Oh, yeah. Not that far apart. Yeah. All water. All water. Oh, the good news was that they were able to get asphalt out of Greenfield, Mass. I thought all the plants had closed, but they found yeah, the it was weather still working. So, yeah. yeah, thank God because the, the stuff was coming out of that hole as fast as we were putting it in. And it was a mess for two or three days until they got the asphalt back in there. So, yeah, it was pretty rough. It was a mess. I was just curious. I hadn't really heard. I mean, so, I knew yeah. there was some type of water issue there, but yeah, that's what happened. So, it didn't affect any homeowners. It was on an old an old service line that had been replaced and abandoned. Oh really? So huh. Still churning water. How did they, how did they know about it? How did they find out? Started coming up through the pavement. Really? <laughs> Bubble and crude. Nice. Huh. No, mm. it wasn't another oil tank. Yeah. yeah. I think that was a bubble and crude. Oh my <laughs> it was God. just water. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know. Is that it way? Yep. Thanks. I wish everybody a happy holiday. <laughs> right, we won't see each other now till 2023. Seven. Yes. Well, Scott, I already get on the items I have, and also I wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Um, holidays. I think this Friday is the Not the For Men's Night. I was out with the ladies' night. I love the dinner at the uh, uh, Bunny Bar. And um, so there's that going on. I hope the weather will be a little bit kinder to us than the rest of us do. And uh, so enjoy the holidays, enjoy the lights. It's beautiful downtown in the village. And uh, and everyone be safe and have a happy holiday. And I think that's it. We need uh, we have no need for the second session. Okay. And a second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 aye.